I regret watching this Manchester United match because don't get me wrong, even though I'm happy that we won, the match was not worth staying up until 3 a.m. in the night to watch it because it was just a, such a poor quality match from both the sides. At this point of the season, I'm not expecting United to play any good football anymore because it's just ridiculous the amount of injuries that we have. We got two more injuries. Hoyland and Maguire both are out injured. We are playing without a left back, without a striker. We are down to our last few defenders. We have five defensive injuries. It's I've never seen a more injury hit season at Manchester United ever before. In how the team is playing, there's a lack of fluidity in the attack and defensively we are so vulnerable. This game showed the lack of quality in the squad. In the start of the game, we already had two chances which any other team scores. Anthony had a clear shot on goal which he just had, which he just needed to hit the target and it was a goal. But he hit the crossbar. McTominay had two very open headers which he should have scored but he hit them straight at Turner. So it just shows that this team is lacking in confidence and play style. I was actually expecting Forrest to play a little better, to play more ag- aggressively because they know how bad United are playing and how many injuries we have. But what we saw in this game is that Forrest was employing a middle block. What that basically meant is that Bruno, Casemiro, McTominay could not pass through the middle. That limited our attacking options so much because as soon as they employed the middle block to prevent Casemiro and Bruno, then they doubled up on Garnacho. Because they knew that our left back Amrabat was not actually a left back who would do underlaps. So that is why Garnacho was locked down throughout this whole game. He couldn't do anything because as soon as he caught the ball, there would be two Nottingham Forest defenders on him. And on the other side, we had Anthony. Anthony, who wasn't really doing offensively much. He was great defensively. But offensively, it's just the usual Anthony who just slows the game down. So because of this, United couldn't break Nottingham Forest because our passing is so slow, our tempo is so slow that we couldn't move the ball quickly enough around the Nottingham uh, defence to play behind the lines or play through their lines, which led to such a boring, boring game that I almost fell asleep multiple times. And I'm sure I am not the only one. Even you as a fan, no matter where you're watching around the world, might have felt how boring this game was. So many of our players who generally play well had a pretty bad game because of this. The biggest example would be Garnacho. Like I said before, being double teamed on the on the left wing led to him not being able to triple much. As soon as he went through one guy, the second guy would tackle him. Or he wouldn't just have any place to dribble through and just had to pass back or sideways. Another thing was that Kanacho was not tracking back properly. Two or three times, Nico Williams was free in our own box. And that was because Kanacho stopped tracking him back. It could have led to a goal if it was, you know, a side of better quality. And thankfully, it was not and we didn't concede. But it just shows that not only Kanacho, Rashford also had a pretty bad game. The problem with Rashford is that, first of all, he's not a striker. We all know that. We have all seen that throughout the years. He cannot hold the ball up. He cannot link play. And because of all, he doesn't have the patience to be as a striker. As soon as he gets the ball, he immediately tries to do something fancy. And ends up losing the ball because of that. Either he can't control the ball or his pass is not good enough. Then he starts throwing his arms around. The problem with Rashford Kankli is, I think... He's not enjoying the team. He's not enjoying how we're playing. I don't know why that's happening. Whether it's a loss of confidence or he feels that he's not being the focal point anymore. That he's playing second fiddle to, let's say, Hoyland or Garnacho. There's something wrong and he's not performing to his best. Because there was one instance where, through some quick passing, uh, Bruno was able to play a Trashford behind for the forest line and Rashford is through on goal the only problem was that he was way too outside the normal scoring angle despite that Rashford decided to shoot and not cross the ball across it 
to McTominay who was open and that led to a really bad shot which was no no win near the goal and that just shows his mentality that he would rather shoot from a really crazy angle than pass to his teammate whether that's out of frustration that he isn't getting chances or he wants to score and be in the headlines again but there's just something going on with him which isn't gelling well with the team if you're like my video so far then i would really appreciate if you can click on the subscribe button below because i will be posting football content regularly and i hope to have you in my community next up would be bruno after watching this game with bruno right if you see at the stats it would say that bruno had the most assist most created chances stuff like that like his stats are always good but watching him doesn't feel like that it was another classic bruno game where it's just frustrating it's not that bruno is a bad player or his game is bad it's just that his all of the games are just average it's not something great recently we could see that in this game he was struggling a bit physically right and i think he's playing while being injured it's because bruno is a type of guy who wants to do who wants to put in 120% effort for united and we all appreciate that we are not doubting his effort the problem is if he keeps playing with an injury right forcing himself to play because even ten hag in his post match uh, conference said that he's playing with an injury later down the line his body will break down and instead of taking a break now for one or two weeks and recover he will be out for months later on if he keeps pushing himself the bruno we all know is someone who's world class right at one point he was being compared to de bruyne but currently whether it's his injury whether he has his fatigue and he's in need of some rest he's not performing to his levels and that's why the fans are turning against him because we all know how much better bruno can be because even in this game in the second half most of what he was doing right most of his shots were straight at the keeper it was never troubling even a bad keeper like turner everything was straight at the keeper no matter where he shot from so he just needs some rest to reset and then come back into his old form let's talk about some other players as well uh anthony anthony had a i think a good game the problem is anthony was better defensively than offensively he was tracking back a lot putting in great challenges when that De- when dalo was caught out of position but it's the same thing with anthony every time whenever you give the ball to anthony you're never expecting him to score you're never expecting him to assist because for example if you give the ball to kanacho and he starts running at defenders you think that oh kanacho might do something but that's never the case with anthony with anthony it always feels that he's just there to keep possession he takes the ball out wide he just de- does some body feints and then passes backward anthony is not the type of winger so far with reddit who tries to dribble through the defender and that's the reason why he's not popular in the fan base is that he is never seen as an attacking threat despite being uh, such an offensive winger at ajax it's just that he's not that at all here it's he has somehow turned into a possession winger instead of an attacking winger he didn't have a bad game by any means i think he was he played pretty well he might even have been our best attacker but it's just that we need a lot more from him if he wants to stay here because we have a lot of competition in the right wing spot beat garnacho beat amad beat pelestri forson anthony there are a lot of options on right wing and if he wants to stay he has to improve a lot after that amrabat had a good game amrabat as a left back as you all know we don't have any full backs he did a decent enough job yes he got spun a couple of times and he couldn't track back because he's slow but in the second half we all saw why amrabat can be important he took the ball from the defenders and he was spraying passes across the field and they were accurate the thing with amrabat is i think he hasn't been given a fair chance he came to united very late on the last day of the transfer window he didn't have a pre-season because he was protesting to join us then he got injured then he got played as a left back then he went to afcon and now he's finally back and playing as a left back again Amrabat can be a good squad option. I'm not saying he should start. I'm not saying he's better than Casemiro or he's the long-term DM solution. But at our current club, we don't have 
a profile similar to Casemiro except Amrabat. So for the rest of the season, he can be a very good option as long as we give him some more minutes because he can do a decent enough job. Yes, he might not play against Liverpool or City or uh, Arsenal and dominate them. But against rest of the league, I think he's good enough just to hold the line. Besides that, some of the noticeable players would be Lindelof, who put in a decent ship, to be honest. He was tracking back with um, Avoni, I think his name is, who's a fast PC attacker. And Lindelof was able to keep up with him and keep him quiet for most of the game. So, when Maguire, Martinez, Shaw are injured, I think he's a very decent option to play. And Dalo also had a really good game. Dallo should have had like two assists if our players could finish, you know, and he made some great tackles once again. Dallo has been one of our most important players this season. Not only because he was fit, not only because he's consistent, but because he's improving. You can see that his crossing is improving, his attacking runs are improving, his defensive positioning is improving. And last but not the least, Onana. Onana might be going into his role and Onana's test will be on Sunday whether he's actually returning to good form or not because until now the thing has been that Onana either saves the shot and puts it into a danger zone or he just concedes now on Sunday against City he will be facing a lot of shots a lot of on target good shots and now we will see whether Onana has the middle to play and be a United keeper going forward. Because one of the things of Dahia was in these big games against big teams, Dahia for most of his career turned up and saved United. So let's see if Onana can do it. I'm, I'm hoping he can. Because Onana has a good personality and you can see he's trying. Whether it's his confidence or his basic, something is going wrong with him and let's all hope that he can recover that. And of course, our goal in the 89th minute. I think all of us was expecting United to go into overtime and probably lose on penalties or something. But thankfully, Casemiro turned up. Casemiro is a, probably our only consistent set-piece threat. Because since he has joined, I think he has scored most of our set-piece and no one else scores him. Maybe, maybe McTominay sometimes, but most of the times it's Casemiro. And he once again put in a very, very good header. A glancing header which took Turner out of it. The biggest talking point is the Felipe red card issue. This picture, right? You can see what Casemiro did and he got a red card for it. And then you can see what Felipe did. And he didn't even get booked. This was seen on VAR and they decided it's legal to put his hand on Bruno's throat. So I don't understand what this agenda is with United, right? Like why is it that every time a United player does something, it gets blown out of proportion in media, in, you know, with bar, with the referees, whatever, whatever. But here, Felipe did it, didn't get booked, VAR didn't check him, media isn't talking about it. So there's definitely some sort of agenda against United. Because if Casemiro did this to a Nottingham Forest player, Casemiro would have simply been arrested on the spot. The English police would have rushed on the field, put him in cuffs and taken him. And media would have been talking about how dangerous a player Casemiro is, how violent he is. But because it's not a United player, nothing happens. So that's really frustrating that it's different set of rules for United and its players. Now our next game is against Liverpool in the FA Cup. By that time, I think uh, Hoyland comes back, which is good news. And it's at Old Trafford. But it's the same thing. If we keep playing like this, Liverpool might win, even if they are playing with the kids. So, I'm glad we at least got through to quarterfinals, because if we didn't, then, you know, it would have been again a media storm of Ten Hag uh, not being good, Ten Hag need to be sad, whatever, whatever. So, I'm glad we got through, even though we are playing bad. At this point of the season, it's just about collecting wins and getting Europe. That's all there is. I don't think we'll improve in the play side. I don't think we'll dominate teams anymore. But it's just about progressing and getting some end result. That's all there is to this season. The game on Sunday is going to be 
dicey, you know, how it's usually is. But now we are with our weakest squad. City is in, you know, their favored run where they win 10 games in a row. The biggest problem is that United is giving 20 shots a game to any team we play against. The only good thing has been our opponents haven't been able to finish those chances. The issue here is City is a team who if you give them one chance, they might miss. If you give them two chances, they might not score. If you give them three chances, they will score. So against such a team, if you give them 20 shots, they will hit 10 on target and they will score 2 or 3 from them at least. So we need to improve defensively at least, even if we can't attack. And I'm going to guess that the game plan is going to be sit deep, absorb the pressure and hit them on the counter through Rashford, Ganacho, Anthony, etc. That can work as long as we remain defensively compact. I'm not expecting a win. At most, I'll expect a one-all draw. But if we can get a result, I would be more than happy. I'm not saying it will change our season or that will suddenly make Ten Hag the greatest manager. But it will be important, a morale-boosting win at least, especially for the top four race. So let's see what happens. Now, if you think this result was bad against Tottenham Forest, then you should see how bad and how damaging the result was against Fulham. You can check my match reaction right here. And I will see you all again after the Manchester Derby probably. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.